And one thing is very evident, our God is working. I remember in the first today in the name of Jesus and so we declare the service open in the name of God the Father and in God of the Son and the name of God the Holy Spirit. You are not just be good. There are certain fellows under the sound of my voice that kind of encounter you have this month. You will live the rest of your life to tell about the story. that none shall be left the same. Most of all, don't doubt Thank our you. salvation. If anybody asks you, are you a child of God? You say yes. It comes by the Bible says hearing it. and hearing by the word of God. The, the, the translation actually means continuous hearing. Whether you won't run all your life. There are things that when you ask for and God does it, people will be amazed. I tell you, brethren, because there are many things you may never gain in this world. But your children can get it. Brother, lift up your voice and cry to God. I need an encounter in this world. In the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, in the name of God the Holy Ghost. Let's open to Exodus chapter 5. Exodus chapter 5. Exodus chapter 5. I'm going to try to see how quickly we can do this so that we can get out of your way and we can do our thanksgiving proper. Exodus chapter 5. Now, depending on the Bible that you have, you will notice that verse 22, it starts with a different heading. Some of you will notice that verse 22 is actually categorized and is a continuous process with chapter 6. And that's why you will notice that sometimes a chapter does, is not the one that has the heading. The heading or the subheading starts from verse 22. And so we are going to read it together, uh, whatever translation you have, but I read from my own King James that I have modified in my mind. So some things may not be according to how it is in your Bible. Verse 22, so Moses returned to the Lord and said, Lord, why have you brought trouble on these people? And why, why is it that you have sent me? Verse 23, for since I came to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has done evil to these people. Neither have you delivered your people at all. Now, I want you to understand that Moses is frustrated. He's accusing God and he's talking about what Pharaoh has done. And then God answered. May God answer you. Amen. In the day of your frustration, may God answer you. Amen. The Bible says in chapter 6, Then the Lord said unto Moses, now you shall see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand, he will let them go. And with a strong hand, he will drive them out of his land. And God spoke to Moses and said to him, I am, remember that name, I am the Lord. And I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as God Almighty. Popularly known that as the El Shaddai. But by my name, Lord, in some translations it says Jehovah. But by my name, Jehovah, I was not known to them. And then he goes on to say, I have also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage in which they were what? Strangers. Verse 5. And I have also heard the groaning 
of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians keep in bondage, and I have remembered my covenant. Therefore say to the children of Israel, I am the Lord. I will bring you out from under the bondage, no, the burdens of the Egyptians. I will rescue you from their bondage, and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgment. And then it goes on and on and on. Brethren, I want to talk to you briefly about a divine encounter. A divine encounter is just simply two words. It is simply the word divine, meaning heavenly, and the word to encounter. The word to encounter strictly means to meet or to come upon face to face. It means to confront either by chance, suddenly, or deliberately. I'll read that again. The word encounter means to meet, to come upon face to face, to confront either by chance, suddenly, or how? Deliberately. The Bible says in Luke chapter 14, verse 31, is when Jesus was speaking, he said, or oh, what king, as he goes to encounter or engage another in war, will not first of all sit down to count the costs? Maybe he is able to wage the war. James chapter 1, verse 2. The Bible says, count it all joy, my brothers, when you fall into experience, you face, or you encounter various temptations. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 19, I expect all of you to know that by heart now. And that you may come to know or encounter practically through personal experience the love of Christ which far surpasses mere head knowledge without experience, that you may be filled up throughout your being to all the fullness of God. Brethren, because of time, I'm going to talk about just very few things very quickly. And why does it matter if a man has an encounter with God or not? I will quickly tell you why. Because I have learned in life that if you want to understand the subject, always ask the question, why, first. Because when you ask the question, why, then you know exactly the reason, the purpose for that thing. Why do we need an encounter? Every one of us needs an encounter because the amount of God that we know thus far is not sufficient for the places that God is taking us. I'll say it again. Every one of us need an encounter because the more, the mere knowledge that you have now is not sufficient for the places that God is taking you. And that is why you will notice that it is not unusual that you might have faith. In fact, as far as you are a child of God, you had faith for salvation. Most of us don't doubt our salvation. If anybody asks you, are you a child of God? You say, yes. And the Bible says that faith comes by hearing. You heard the word of God. You had faith in the word of God. You believed. The Bible says with the heart man believes and with the mouth confession is made. The Bible says whoever shall believe and call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so you believed. But then there is another dimension. Because that dimension is when you know Christ as the Lamb of God. The Bible says he is the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. It is, it is possible for you to believe in the Lamb, but you may not believe in the Lion. And so at certain stage, you need a fresh dimension when God encounters you in a certain way 
then your faith goes from level to level. No wonder Romans 10, 17 says, for faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The, the, the translation actually means continuous hearing by the word of God. It is not once you hear once that you stop hearing. And so the Hebrews ascribed many names to God. Are we together? And the name they ascribed to God was based on their experiences with God. And so you will notice the majority of the names that we know now, except the name that God himself told us by himself, it was by people's experience. And so it is possible that you yourself can add to the list. Are we together? Without due respect, if God has done something for me and I have seen him in the dimension and I search through scripture, and I do not see that thing in scripture, then I can by myself say he is Jehovah, and then I put that thing there. Uh, do you agree with me? And the reason is because all of those names were as a result of somebody saying, if somebody has done this, then this is the name that I will call him. I'll give an example. When Jacob, because Jacob is an interesting gentleman, when Jacob got to Bethel, and the Bible says he slept and suddenly had a dream. The Bible never said that Joseph, uh, Jacob had a dream before then. But all of a sudden, Jacob had a dream. And in that dream, he saw God. And it, it's still strange that he knew who God was. But he saw God in that dream, and then he saw a ladder. Because up until now, I didn't even think that Jacob believed in God. But when push came to shove, Jacob knew that that was God. And the Bible says, he immediately said, I will call this place Bethel. What does Bethel mean? Bethel simply means the house of God, right? Fast forward to chapter 32. By the time you get to chapter 32, Jacob is running again. <laughs> but then you won't run all your life. <laughs> Jacob ran from home. He ran to Laban. Jacob ran away from Laban, is running again to Canaan, right? As he's running to Canaan now, Jacob is devising ways. I don't even know what kind of man does that. That you will first of all divide your, your troops, and then you send your, your wife and children to one side, you send your wife and children to one side, and then you're left by yourself. You think that's security? What if the enemy attacks the one on the left where Joseph was? Anyway... So as he, was living, as he was running away again, the Bible then says again that he now had another dream. If you remember, in that dream, when Jacob woke up, that place was not Bethel, that place was Peniel. But what did Jacob say? He said, I have seen God now, face to face. He said, so this place shall be called the face of God. Are we together? And so that is why I said it is good to mark events in your life. Because when you mark events in your life, then you can be able to say on the 13th of July 2003 when I got here, I could say God is faithful. Because that is the day I go to Canada. Some of you have not started praying by that time. In fact, some of you didn't even want to come to Canada at that time. Are we together? And so if I remember then I expect you to remember. Because it is only the ungrateful that when God does things, those days don't matter. After all, the day you got married, God help you, forget. Especially if you're a man, forget. God will help you. Pastor won't be able to help you. Amen? And so, having said that, then we need to ask ourselves, what is the difference between the names? Because when we talk about encounter, we are talking about encountering the same person in different dimensions. Now, by the grace of God, I stand in different offices. When I pick up my phone and I call my mother, I stand in the office. Are we together? If I call my dad, I stand in the office of what? A son. 
If I go further and I called my sister, I stand in the office of a sibling. And so somebody can say my brother, another can say my son. But it's the same person. Are we together? Likewise, today, by the grace of God, I stand in the office of somebody's father. Are we together? At the same time, I stand in the office of somebody that God has used to help one or two people. And so when people look at me, they will thank God and say, thank God for the man that God used to help me. Now, going back to God, the name El Shaddai means very simply the almighty God, the self-existing and the self-sufficient one. In fact, the Hebrew translation basically translated him to mean the double-breasted one, the one that can never, ever go out of resources. And that is why there is one quotation I keep telling you you need to know. The Bible says it in the book of John. I think John, John chapter 14. It says, whatever you demand in my name, I told you the Hebrew translation, whatever you demand in my name, if our adventure... We don't have it, we will make it for you. If per adventure. And tell me, what does God not have? There is nothing. Are we together? So that is why the Bible then says, the eyes have not seen, nor ears heard. It is because there are things that when you ask for, and God does it, people will be amazed. Because they think that God does not do such things. Isaac, Abraham, and Jacob, look at that passage we read. He said, by my name Jehovah, did I not completely reveal myself to them? Because I went back to check. You know, sometimes when you read some things, and it seems to contradict another thing you read, you need to check. A lot of times the problem is not the contradiction, the problem is that it has been lost in translation. Because when God said, I did not only appear to them as Jehovah, it means that I appeared to them the way I appeared to everybody else. There was nothing really personal. Because Jehovah Jireh is a personal thing. Jehovah Nisi is a personal thing. Jehovah Rapha is a personal thing. Are we together? But then I remembered that it was the same God that appeared to Abraham and said, your wife shall have a child. Now, it was the same God that appeared to Abraham. When they were going, and Isaac said, my father, the ram, and the sticks, and everything. What did Abraham say? He said, the Lord will do what? Provide. It means that what that translation is saying is that God did not completely appear to them by that name. And so they themselves could not pass on the name to the next generation. Are we together? When you get to Isaac, the Bible says even Isaac's wife didn't, didn't have a child for some time. And so he took Isaac praying for his wife. Whatever was the reason why the wife didn't have a child, it means that when Isaac prayed for her, for her there was deliverance and healing. Are we together? Is that a personal encounter with God or not? It is. When Jacob... I don't even need to talk about Jacob now. You have seen that Jacob had many, many encounters. In fact, the last encounter that Jacob had with God, at a point, Jacob is bold. At a point, he said, what is your name? At least in the culture I come from, you don't ask somebody that is senior to you, what is your name? And I remember when I came to Canada, we used to go to another church, and my boy, my boy was like seven. And so this boy that is my son's age mate comes to me, he said, what is your name? That time I was new. I said, I'm so so person's father. He said, no, what is your name? So I thought, I thought this boy has no respect to. <laughs> I didn't know that in this part of the world, your name is your identity, not necessarily because of who you are associated with. But now, oh, I'm, I'm happy to tell everybody my name now. If I, if I come to your house and your dog is outside, I'll say, please, tell your owner that bring Adonu guys here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But the point is that Jacob asked him, 
He said, what is your name? And I like the response. The response that he gave him is the same response you find in the book of Judges chapter 13. When the angel went to Samson's father and said, your wife should have a child. And then he said, when these things happen, tell us your name. He said, you don't need my name. I'm only a servant. That's another thing I'll talk about. When you are a servant, your name does not matter. What matters is the name of the person that sent you. The minute you begin to put your own name, if I go back to Genesis, I think it was chapter 37. When the servant went to look for a wife for Abraham's son, when he got there, the introduction was very simple. He said, I am Abraham's servant. My name does not matter. The name that matters. And that is why he says, David said, you come against me with bow and arrow, how do I come against you? In the name of the Lord. When you understand those things, then you know there's always a dimension of God that is left for you. Because that dimension of God is what you need to know. Now, by the time you get to the New Testament, you will then notice that there were so many people with so many different kinds of encounters. Every one of those encounters, we call them signs, we call them wonders, we call them miracles. Because it is impossible to encounter God or Christ or the Holy Spirit and remain the same. It is impossible. I made up my mind long ago that if I have 30 minutes, if I 30 minutes is too much, if I have 15 minutes to spend with you, that God will give me the grace to deposit something in your, in your life that you remember forever. Why? Because you can never see the glory of God and remain the same. Now, if I'm a child of God, should I be like my father or not? Yes. And that is why I'm always worried when Christians, when some Christians come to you, by the time they are leaving, you are drained. You know what I mean? You are drained emotionally, you are drained psychologically. In fact, you just want to bury your head and cry. And then you remember God has all sorts of children. Are we together? Now, the question that you ask yourself is, how do you know about God? I will tell you just about three or three or four things. Number one, it is possible to know nothing about God. Pharaoh said, when, J when Moses went to him, he said, I don't know your God. Exodus chapter 3 and Exodus chapter 5. He said, I don't know your God. Number two, even John chapter 9, you remember that man that was born blind? When they said, who was it? He said, whether he's a sinner or not, I don't know. I don't know who he is. All I know is that once I was blind, but now I see. Number two, it is possible to know of God by what you have heard others say that he has done for them. This is by other people's testimony. You can, talk, you can ask yourself, Mark chapter 10, Mark chapter 10, John chapter 4. In Mark chapter 10, the man that you guys call the blind Bartimaeus, the Bible says they told him he heard, and then they said that Jesus is coming, right? And then he began to shout. It wasn't just shouting. Do you remember what he shouted? Jesus, thou son of? How did the blind man know that Jesus was the son of David? Somebody had told him. He couldn't have read it. Somebody had done what? Told him. And they've not just told him. They've told him what that person can do. And so the man made up his mind that if it's only this one chance I have, those of you that know, talk about one chance. If it's only this one chance I have, I better make the best of it. You remember also the woman by the well, John chapter 4? That woman, by the time she went to testify, the people came by what she had said. And then when they now came, they said, ah, we believe not just because of what you have said, but because of what we have also seen. Number three, it is possible to know of God by what you have seen him do for others, not because they testified. There are some testimonies you don't need to give before people know. Acts chapter 9, no, chapter 8. The Bible says that when Simon the sorcerer saw, 
The people were not testifying. It was, he saw it himself. And then he wanted it. Number four. It is possible to know God by what you have seen him do for yourself. It is possible to know God by what you have seen him do for yourself. And I'm sure majority of you will have known God in one dimension or the other because of what he has done. John chapter 4, that woman said, come and see a man. He has told me everything I've ever done. That is experiential knowledge. I pray that you have that kind of knowledge. <laughs> Number five. Number five. It is possible that a man will come to know only one part of God. That one is dangerous. Only one part of God. The Bible never recorded it, but I can imagine when you go to the land of Egypt in the times of Moses, and then you tell them that God is love. They will say, is it out of love that he turned our Nile into blood? They will say, is it out of love that he turned, that, that Moses brought out uh, the sand and it became fleas? Was it out of love that darkness was upon the face of the land? Was it out of love that all our firstborn were killed? <laughs> there is a side of God that you pray your lifetime that you never know. Because there is a side of God that when God says enough is enough, there is a side of God that Pharaoh got to know by force. I pray that none of us will ever know, get to know that side. <laughs> Just like there is a side of God that most of you know, but I also don't want you to stop there. It is true that God is love. But it is also true that God is the judge of the whole world. There are times when certain things will override others. Let me go to number six. It is possible to know God in different capacities. In different capacities. Jesus, being one with God, knew what God could do. This was one that had an encounter even before he came to the earth. The disciples of Jesus had an idea what Jesus could do. But more importantly, Paul the Apostle, he had an encounter, and the encounter changed his life. He knew that God can control weather. He knew that God can turn around situations. He knew that God can raise the dead. And so he encountered Christ in different dimensions. Now, my question to you then is this. When the Bible says, by my name Jehovah, have I not appeared fully unto them? What area of your life do you need an encounter with God to be able to have experiential knowledge of what God can do? The question is, what areas have you given up that maybe God doesn't really want this for me. It is because you have not had an encounter. When you have an encounter, that your difficult husband will become easy. That your wife that you think is stubborn will become easy. Because when a man has an encounter, things change. When you have an encounter, even your children you will suddenly notice that there's this different spirit within them because of the encounter that you had. May I tell you that it is possible that your encounter can affect your generations to come. Because of your own encounter, God can say, for the sake of your father, Benga Denuga, I will do this. It's an encounter. The same way that God said, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac. 
Is God not my own father? Is he not your own father? So why shouldn't God be able to say that because of you, that it will be a blessing to your children? Why shouldn't God be able to say that I remember what your father has done, and so I'm going to pay you the profit for it? Let me tell you, brethren, there are many things you may never gain in this world, but your children can gain it. Are we together? There are many places you may never go. But when your children get there, God will have planted somebody that will know your name. There are many things that you cannot achieve that the day your name pops up, everything else will just change. And so my prayer for you is that the encounter that we are experienced today that it will change your generations yet unborn. Yes. I want you to stand on your feet, brother. I want you to stand on your feet. I don't know about you, this month will not pass by without me having a special encounter. Tell your neighbor, I need a special encounter. <laughs> tell your neighbor on the other side now, I need a special encounter. <laughs> now, tell the one behind you, Uh -huh. Tell the one in front. Now tell that one that is turning away from you. That one that is turning away that doesn't want to. Tell that one. Look, look, look. I need a special encounter. Uh -huh. Now this is what we'll do. Now I want you to hold hands with your neighbors. Because of time, just hold hands with your neighbor very quickly. And we are going to lift up your voice. We are going to lift up our voice. We are going to pray. There is an encounter a church will have that the encounter will be such that everybody will see it and everybody will be part of it. And so there's only one prayer I want you to pray as you're holding that person. And that is that, Father, give my sister or brother an encounter they will not be able to hide. Begin to pray. An encounter they cannot hide. Is it in their body? Is it a mental eating? Is it a psychological thing? Is it anxiety? Is it fear? That they will be able to record that on this day, 6th of October 2024. That they had an encounter with the one that can destroy anxiety and fear. That they will be able to say that by the prayers of the saints of God in Cornerstone, that God turned a new leaf for them. I want you to lift up your voice and pray. There are people amongst us that are believing God for a life partner. There are people amongst us that are believing God for the fruit of the womb. There are people amongst us that are believing God for promotion. There are people amongst us that are believing God to have a deeper work with him. I want you to lift up your voice and just pray. Let my sister have an encounter. Let my brother have an encounter. Oh, whatever it is that it belongs unto them. Say, God, appear to them as Jehovah Rapha. Appear to them as the Lord Almighty. Appear to them, O oh God, in the beauty of your holiness. Appear to them, O oh God, as the Alpha, as the Omega. Appear to them, O oh God, as the Good Shepherd. The bread of life. Brother, lift up your voice. Say, God, appear to them. Preparation of the life. Appear to them as the vine. Oh, appear to them as the way and the truth. 
Brother, lift up your voice. Say, God, appear to your child as the Elohim. The El Shaddai, the El Olam. Appear to them, O oh God, as the El Bethel, as the God of Jabok, the God of Bethel, the God of Hebron, the God of Israel, the God of deliverance, the God of Cornerstone, the God of the redeemed Christian Church of God. Lord, appear to them. Don't let my brother just know you by the hearing of the words. Don't let my sister know you just by other people's testimonies. Appear to them as a deliverer, O oh God. The Bible tells us that God is a fortress. God be their fortress. The Bible says that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Bible says that the righteous run into it and they are safe. Appear to them as their, as their safety, oh God. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Oh Lord, appear to them. Appear to them, oh God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Now you're going to pray for yourself. Your prayer will have two parts. You will first of all acknowledge the parts that God has appeared to you already. And then after you begin to pray for those parts that you have not experienced God. Because I believe that today things must change for you. So begin to thank God and say, Lord, I thank you. Oh, you have been my, you have been my shade, you have been the shade upon my right hand. The Bible says that it shall, a, a thousand shall fall by your side and ten thousand by your right hand. Oh, because, because they tell you, just lift up your voice and thank him. And say, Father, I thank you. This is how far you have helped me. You are my Ebenezer, I thank you. You are the one that can bring a man from nothing up to something. You are the one that can bring a man and make an exception of him. Oh, why don't you thank him? Why don't you thank him? And then just for the next two or three minutes, begin to pray. Lord, may I encounter you in, the, in another dimension. Begin to tell him that dimension now that you want to encounter him. Oh, let them be truthful with God. Even if you don't know that particular dimension, you can say, God, have your way in my life. All I know is that I need a new encounter with you. I need an encounter unto glory. Because the Bible says that we are being transformed from glory to glory. I need an encounter unto great testimony. I need an encounter of healing. Oh, I need an encounter of promotion. I need an encounter within and without. I need an encounter where I will speak for itself. Oh, brother, lift up your voice and cry to God. I need an encounter in this month. Jacob said, I will not leave you until you bless me. I want you to take that attitude and say, Lord, as I travel in prayer in this month, I refuse to go without my own blessing. I am tired of hearing only of other people's testimony. I want my own testimony in this area. Oh, brethren, God has enough resources to distribute them. He has enough resources to give you your own and give other people their own. Why don't you lift up your voice now and talk to him and say, Father, let me encounter you in a new way. Let me know you as Jehovah Shekinu. Let me know you as Jehovah Rapha. Oh, let me know you, Lord, as Jehovah my righteousness. Brother, lift up your voice and talk to him this morning. Oh, the God, I want to know you. I want to know you. I want peace that you are Jehovah Shalom unto me. Why don't you lift up your voice? Why don't you lift up your voice? That you will know him as Jehovah Sabbath. That you will know him in all spheres. All the 16 different names that he has with Jehovah. Say, God, let me know you completely. In the name of Jesus, 
Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Lastly, you want to talk to God? Lastly, you want to talk to God. One of the challenges we face most of the times is that we forget what you are not supposed to forget. But then we don't remember the things you are supposed to remember. Some of you, God has been so good to you, but you forgot it. You want to pray and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, everything that heaven has ever done for me, bring me to a place of repentance and gratitude begin to pray there are some of you, oh, you all you ever think about is what God has not done that prayer just came to my heart now I want you to just pray just about 30 seconds some of you remember when you were in school you fell yet your leg did not break some of you remember a car hit you yet you were not injured do you know how many accidents that you have had do you know how many times that you have traveled? Do you know how many times your wife has gone through labor and yet God brought her out on the other side? Are those not enough to thank God for? And yet you have forgotten. All you are asking now is that God, you have not given me a fourth child. Why don't you thank him for those things? Say, God, I might have overlooked the blessings of the past. I may not remember them all, but I thank you for them. I give you glory, I give you praise. Oh, glory be to your name, my Father. Glory, glory, glory be to your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And so I pray for you that in this month, that Lord God will leave nothing unturned concerning you. I pray that, that, that you be positioned correctly. In this month, you'll be in the right place at the right time. Amen. I pray that in this month, when the heaven shall come knocking, you shall not be absent. Amen. You will not be absent at home. Amen. You will not be absent at work. Amen. You will not be absent in your duty post. Amen. In the name of Jesus, I pray that this new dimension of God will take you to another level. Amen. I pray that your faith will be built. I pray that God will make you a testimony. Amen. In the name of Jesus. I come against everything within that will not allow the encounter of God to be meaningful to you. I pray that every self-righteousness today we bury them. I say every self-righteousness today we bury them. Every spirit of pride today we say they shall no longer rule over you in the name of Jesus. As you go, may God go with you. May the Almighty be with you. May all your heart desires concerning this month be a new testimony for you. And so shall it be. In the name of God the Father. In the name of God the Son. In the name of God the Holy Ghost.